I'm Alan Douches from West West Side Music. And I'm Jamal Rue from West West Side Music. And this is From Where We Sit. And uh, we talked about in another blog, blog um, what is mastering. And sometimes mastering is mixing. Where we get more than two tracks and we call them stems. Or separations. Somebody called Bus them prints. I've Bus, heard all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I know, I know. Right, yeah. um, I mean, I prefer stems, I guess. I, I like stems. Old school. Yeah. And, and what can be really helpful, e- even the, old, the oldest way to do it, mm-hmm. where we would just have instrumentals and acapellas, can be very, very helpful. Or TVs. Or TVs. And lead vocal. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just to, because the mixer or the artist aren't sure about exactly how they want to place those things with each other. Or they want instrumental versions, and they want TV versions, right. and they want a full version, right. and they want a clean version. Yeah. So we're going to be beeping stuff or reversing stuff or masking curses or whatever. Right. Sorry, cussing. Cussing. Cut, cussing. cut the cussing down. Right. But uh, I guess my standard stem set that people, because I have a couple people that send them religiously, are all drums together, bass on its own, guitars, keys, backing vocals, lead vocals, and then effects. Yeah. That's what I get regularly. If someone does send them, that's what I'm used to getting. Right. Now, should, tho- should those all individually go through a stereo bus compression? I mean... No. I always feel that stereo bus processing on the part of a mixer, there's some of it that makes it happen more, and then there's some of it that is defensive against their mastering engineer. Right. They're, they're worried that we're going to turn their snare down, so they, they are bullying with the snare drum, or right. whatever, right. you know, yeah. whatever yeah. it is. And so there's a level of it that's good, that's glue, that, you know, makes things kind of pump in a musical way. And then beyond that, it's... Hey, if you want to master your own record, that's what you're attempting to do. If you want me to do it, you got to give me the room to do it. Right. And don't worry, you can tell me that ahead of time. We ask for all the information we can get. You can call, you can email. Say, I'm concerned that these guitars don't cut enough. Don't give me guitars that sound like a shower of razor blades. Right, right. Well, to me, it's kind of like give me, if you're using the two bus compression, which I'm not against, obviously, as long as it's, you know, within a reasonable amount of, you know, glue, not, you know, limiting. Um, but if you're going to give me stems, you got to pull that two bus compression off. Yeah, Be- it's better. It's better. Well, because it's just not going to blind. I can't put them up all at an equal level and yeah. say, ah, there's the mix. Now, I, you know, since you're now asking me to alter balances potentially within your arrangement, I'd much rather have the ability to either maybe add some compression to a specific stem and or deal with attack time and release times on the overall right. compression, um, you know, especially DSing on vocals. I mean, that's one of the big reasons that I'll ask for uh, a stem with a lead vocal separated from the instrumental track is just like if the vocal happens to be too sil- sibilant and they just don't have a good DSer. You know, we can either do it through the TC, which has got the great DSer, Weiss DSer, or even the DBX 902s in the analog, yeah. analog domain, which are I I love. Yeah. You know, but that that's DSing. I mean, everything we do to fix a problem leaves fingerprints. We do it in a way that hopefully no one else can ever hear them. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. But at the same time. If I don't have to DS your vocal as part of your mix, that's better. If your hi-hat is chopping me up, the only way to bring it back is you're going to lose some air in something else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And 99% of the people might never hear it. Hopefully they won't. I mean, right. that's why we do this. Right. Hopefully they won't, but I'd rather do it in a way where I don't have to, you know, there is no cost to any other signal. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So stems can be great. I mean, in that, in that regard particularly. Yeah. If something is off, if... You know, it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're playing a bass and it's got a real wolf note somewhere, if I have a bass stem, I can tweak it. Right. It's more work for us. But it's not. But, yeah. But it's not a, exactly. because we have a solution. There's a back and that, forth to it. There's a solution that we have for it that doesn't have to there's you no know, cost hinder yeah. other points in the mix. Because yeah. drops were big for a while in, right. in heavy music. You know, bands would be 
putting all these drops in and it'd be and they would be putting them in their mix and then pulling their two bus off sending it to me but the the yeah. drop is just you know 12 db above oh, everything yeah. else and it's like all right well give it to me separate you know and yeah. then i'll place it in the right way yeah. and if i do have a, a couple of other stems kick drum stem or something like that i can yeah I, I can alter that kick drum stem during that bass drop right so that i can let that bass drop be really effective and not pull down on the two bus compression, yeah, yeah. you know, so. Well, the first thing also just, I mean, I might be going far afield, but one of the first things that happens due to over compression is the top two octaves start to start to change. Right. They start to move around because the bottom octaves bully them into compression. Right. Unless you're using multiband and if you're using it enough to have these kind of artifacts, you're using it way too much anyway. Right. You know, right. But when you get stems and and you don't have two bus compression on them or even if you have the same two bus compression when you don't have all these signals competing the air comes back right yeah the cymbals sound natural right. the sibilant starts to go away because there isn't stuff chopping the, the top yeah. end apart right. yeah. so i mean there's to me there's a big plus to stems again it's more work but the work is kind of better in a way, or easier, especially if you've got problems. If you're working with something that just sounds great, stems just give you options for delivery. And I always you want know? the engineer's idea. Oh yeah, their oh absolutely. They're committed to bus. Whatever was approved. Whatever was approved. Yeah. I, I want to have that so that I know that we're not step, we're not going too far away yeah. from that. Yeah. Um, but it is also a really good sense what we were talking about having. The ability from the stems, um, like you know, there's popular guys, you know, Steve Evitt's perfect example. You know, I'm always using his two bus mixes, but he gives me stems, and it's really helpful to do the clean versions. Yeah. You know, to do the instrumental versions for the artist, etc., and so forth. So yeah. I'm never really using those stems for mm -hmm. the main production, but I'm also able to yeah to the band wants other. placement versions yep. you can do them without any kind of you know. yeah yeah and also we can do separate compression on the, those yeah. placement versions because ultimately they don't need them as loud they as don't need them as loud somebody else wants yeah. them for and the different sample rate at the final export too. yeah so that makes a difference um what about like being able to export vocals with effects on the stems do you want, do you, you know, I mean, I, I'm like lots of times, sometimes we'll get a dozen 14 stems and, yeah. and you look at it and you go, come on guys, you gotta be kidding me, you know. Um, I it's tough because certain things, not certain things, you don't know what in, in an approved mix an artist is married to. Right. So there's certain aspects of that where I don't, I don't want more options on my end. If a vocalist likes the effects chain and likes that mix, I'm pretty nervous to want to change it at all, you know? Right, right. Drum kit is the same way. Well, everyone who's playing everything is the same way. Unless you get an artist where you've got, you know, a command power structure or you have a solo artist doing everything, so it's all, there's no ego attached to it, or even arguably there's no uh, idealized version of what they want. I mean, you know, we've both been in the studio in many roles, and when a drummer sits down, they know that they want a certain thing to happen with their drums, and once they've got it in their mix, I don't necessarily want, I don't want the multi-track. No. That's right. what they sat in there with a mix engineer to get. Right. Is the drum kit to sound the way they want it to sound on their record. So, I would like a vocal with the vocal effects printed on it, and if I've got a problem with it, I'll ask. Right. I mean, yeah. but usually, they're right. I mean, that's the, a, yeah. a, you know, the singer's right, the guitar player's right about what they wanted. Right. Technical issues that are going to change the way the master sounds is, a, is another thing. Sibilance is a great example. A vocalist might want their vocals super bright, but there's a limit. To, there's a point yeah. at which that's not musical, and when people are turning their music down because yeah. the vocal's too bright, they don't want that. No singer no, wants no. Well, yeah. there might be some singers who want that, but the vast majority of them don't, yeah. and uh, stems are great for that. Yeah, I mean, I, and I also want to say that, like, I don't prefer stems, at all like I, I mean i'd rather have a really good mix and let us just have that fresh perspective yeah D you know look at any corrective eq match that dynamic so that it's sounding like an album you know match it for the formats that are going out but if you but if you are at all concerned about how your balances are working having the stems is great 
which, which is also not a bad idea for the future for having the instrumentals, having the performance yeah. tracks, for having you know, other, other options for uh, radio mixes or something like that. I'm pretty know. ambivalent about it. I like, a good, I like a good two mix, period. But at the same time, some people, their environment doesn't allow them to do it. And if they're, you know, it does, if they're going to trust us to do that, I'm fine with it. Uh, I don't know. You get a great two mix. It is, it's, it's, everything's easy for everybody yeah. because yeah. our work isn't fixing anything. It's just making it as good as it can be. It's, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like if you work at a car wash and someone drives in in a Ferrari, it's like, well, this is going to be easy. <laughs> really, all I got to do is uncover the emblem, you know, and everyone's going to love it. Whereas, you know, someone comes in in a r rust bucket, it's like, I can wash this all day. It's yeah, never going to look good. Never going to help. You know? Um, all right, well, my main points are just, if you're going to give me stems, don't pass them through the two-bus compression. Yeah. Okay, I mean, obviously, if you're using parallel grouping or, you know, subgrouping and you've got all that compression, that's fine. But... But if you're heavily dependent upon, you know, um, a two-bus compressor to glue your mix together, and you're going to give me stems, take that two-bus off. Yeah. By all, by all means. And I and and for vocal with sibilance, if I'm looking for that, I kind of like to have the effects separate because sometimes I can. I get that. I do. Yeah. It's you know, it is it is better in a lot of you know moments to have more control. Yeah. I just fear it. Yeah. No, when it comes to especially lead vocal. So the, because the other thing that happens once we get stems is we're, we're opening our, ourselves up for revisions upon revisions that upon revisions. Our job is not to make everyone have to reevaluate decisions they made before. It's to make all the decisions they made before work. Right. You right. know, so... Someone gives, I, and I get records, I get stems, we get even, even the simplest thing where you get instrumentals and acapellas and then, and, and I get a separate vocal chain. If I've got a two mix to refer to, refer to. to. Yeah. you know, that's hugely important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to feel fine about it, but I don't want to do, it's happened before for both of us. We've done stuff where I make the vocal sound slightly different and better. Right, and then everyone in the band is super into everything except the singer, who now things are different. And I just I get that. I mean, I'm sympath I'm sympathetic to that. They, yeah. you know, so I'd rather not be the one who has to go through that. Right, right. No. It's like so now we got to do a bunch of stuff. That we've started a fight. <laughs> The band's mad, the producer's loving us, but now he's upset with the whole project. They should I don't know, you know, it's drama and that's not they you know, that's not our job, it's not to create drama, it's, to, think, it's to make all the drama go away because everyone's happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And stems are good for backups. Like I said, I wanna really oh, yeah, I really true. wanna bring that point up that, you know, if if you're a mixing engineer and you're printing just that one mix, you know, you know, you could do the vocal up mix, you could do the vocal down mix, you know, you could do the, you know, the instrumental, the TV, whatever you wanted to do. But if you had stems as well, then you can cover a lot of bases. Well, also you do a record, you do, you, you make, you record a bunch of stuff, the, the whole album cycle doesn't go well, let's say. Right. 500 people hear the record, the tour falls apart, your dog gets sick, he gets better, <laughs> but the tour's wrecked. Five years later, your cousin makes a movie. He wants to use an instrumental of that song. Yep. If we have a backup of the stems, we can kick that out like it's nothing. And, you know, hey, maybe the movie's great and everyone wants to hear that album now. Right, which yeah. is not unusual. Right. You know? Because lots of times people can't find those multi-tracks. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we'll have them in our yeah, backups. Yeah, because they put the drive somewhere and they left it behind and when they moved. Their plugins they aren't opening up. Yeah. You know, oh, there's Lord. A, a, you know the <laughs> yeah. operating system is different. Yeah. So That computer's yeah. gone. Well, if you have any questions about STEMS, if you think it's something right for you, give us, give us a call, drop us an email. WestWestSideMusic.com www.smatmac.com Facebook, we run Facebook. Facebook, MySpace you said. 
We have a MySpace page? Someone, we, we, pro, we can say we have a MySpace page. Yeah. We have a Friendster page for sure. We really do? I don't have any idea. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Right. But we're on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter. And, and there's then there's an, a website. There's an Instagram account somewhere, I think, too. No? There's a westwestsidemusic.com. All right, there's a westwestsidemusic.com. There's actually, yeah, and there's also westwestsidemusicmastering.com. From either of those, you can find out what we Jeez. actually do. You know, no wonder they can't find us. There's too many places. They get they're, confused. Oh, they're finding us. All right. We'll see you guys later. Next one. This is uh, from where we sit. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Adieu.